The views and opinions expressed in this presentation are not necessarily those of the California Department of Toxic Substances Control. And all of a sudden, there are sheriff deputies along the canal there uh, to keep kids out of it. And it was like, this is real. I mean, this really is happening. Penny Newman lived in the town of Glen Avon, right near the Stringfellow Hazardous Waste Site, or as she called it, the Stringfellow Acid Pits. I first became aware of Stringfellow back in about 19, the early 1970s. Well, what brought us in was a request for some assistance by the Santa Ana Regional Water Quality Control Board. They didn't feel like they knew how to um, assess the situation. And we put together a sampling expedition in very short order. There was a um, shadowy understanding or recognition that there was something up there. So we packed up our collywasses and our sampling containers and uh, our respiratory equipment such as it was, put everything in the back of Emil de Vera's station wagon and drove down to Riverside. We got to the site. Uh, I wasn't sure what to expect. First we went out with the regional water board person and he sort of explained what happened during the flood. What scared me was when I realized that there was not a single living thing within the perimeter of Stringfellow. There were evaporation ponds all over the place um, in, in various colors. No insects, no plants, no weeds. And then we went to visit with a guy named Hoot Gibson who took care of the place. He was very, you know, very colorful fellow. Um, and he was uh, very open about, you know, showing us the site and... And so they all got into this boat to go out into the middle of the, of, of the ponds to take samples. The sampling technique for the big ponds was we got in a, got in a rowboat. Because of all of the different materials that went into the pond, um, we couldn't just sample along the edges. Yeah, it was really eye-opening. The, the, the ponds were so concentrated that there were salts crystallizing out on the bottom. So when we thought we were getting sediment, we were pulling up buckets of crystals. And then when we found pavement uh, on one of the sediments, uh, one of the ponds, that turned out to be cakes of DDT. Um, we didn't know that initially until we got back and and uh, Bob did a little infrared analysis and figured out that's what we were looking at. Basically, pure DDT that had recrystallized there. And so we went out in Mr. Gibson's boat. In retrospect, somewhat oblivious of the potential health and safety consequences of falling into the pond. Um, it would have been um, a really tough swim, to say the least. Companies would come in with liquid hazardous waste, for the most part in tank trucks. They'd back up to these ponds and put the waste in the pond. So they would dump the, uh, the waste at the top and over time it would slowly trickle back down. The treatment process was to have the waste simply evaporate and the residual material left in the ponds. And, and the whole operating sort of um, strategy was that given enough time that stuff would evaporate or it would disappear. And finally by 72 the water board had uh, issued an order to Stringfellow which resulted in the closure of the site. He relinquished operation of the site. So now we're left with a bunch of ponds sitting in a box canyon with nobody taking care of it. It was in the worst place imaginable because it was in a natural valley when it rained, the ponds filled up with water. The water became contaminated. Uh, in 78, when we had the heavy rains in Southern California, the site began to fill up and was threatening to uh, break through the dam. That was the point when uh, the Regional Water Board decided to uh, pump out a million gallons of chemicals into the community. To cut a key in one of the dams to allow contaminated water to flow out rather than risk losing the dam. All that water that was resting in those ponds 
poured down into the Glen Avon community through the school playground. It never entered my mind that we had chemicals. I was just seeing flooding. Um, once it subsided a little bit, um, you know, the kids were, were going to school and the field across from the elementary school was open and you would have the kids playing in the puddles there and making beards out of the foam. The waste in, in the, the site had kind of an orangish, grayish tint to it. It would make a really stiff foam and the kids would make a beard out of the foam. And while we thought the foam was a little weird, um, you know, we were told by the water board it was agricultural foam. Well, coming from an agricultural area, that's not the kind of foam that, that we saw. This is very substantial, grayish-looking foam. A lot of the, the chemical waste that were disposed of at the Stringfield site washed off-site into the community. When you look back with hindsight, you realize that a poor choice for a place to put a hazardous waste facility could not have been made. But as we started investigating it, the media picked up on it. And, um, you know, it, it took a few months before we really came to grips with the fact, yes, this did happen, that, yeah, the puddles your kids were playing in had chemicals. So we developed a, a sampling approach and sampled the, the canyon that surrounded this, uh, the waste site and sampled in the community um, and, and found uh, evidence that uh, some of the metals from the site actually did migrate off the site because of the, of the floods. We heard from different parents uh, that their children were having nosebleeds and headaches um, uh, and skin rashes. But we thought it was just kind of the acute piece. And then, you know, as we got to investigating things more and realized, you know, the site has been here since 1952. You know, this isn't the first time there's been any exposure. Raymond Neutra and, and Dick Jackson and, uh, were helping out explaining health effects. Uh, Raymond Neutra ended up doing an epi study in the area to, to look at what the incidence of illness was there and whether it was higher there compared with, with control areas. An epidemiological study was done on Stringfellow um, uh, and, and there were some problems with it, but the results of it um, uh, found that there was an elevated level of certain illnesses and diseases. Penny Newman believed her own children were made ill by this site. When it was presented publicly, it was really whitewashed. You know, we didn't really find anything too, uh, too significant. Um, but what I found out they were talking about was that they didn't consider the elevated levels they did find to be significant illnesses, uh, which I thought was really rather deceitful on their part. And we were the devil incarnate when we were not running the site. 